Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I am your host, Alex Witherow. Today we're going to talk about what might Uber car share look like in America because they've already been doing this in Australia. Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. You also get access to my private industry webinars. Now, let's talk about this. So, Uber has been very, very sneaky. They have been running a car share pilot program over down under in Australia. So, this program will likely shed a lot of light and information on what it's going to be like in America. And I've found some very interesting things that are available to Uber car share hosts that are down in Australia. So, a couple things I want to point out. We got a lot of notes here about this, and I, I uh, just want to uh, walk you guys through a few things that I think are very interesting about Uber car sharing in Australia. Uh, first of all, they allow you to adjust your price. So that is uh, of your car. So that's like Turo, obviously. And Get Around does not allow you to do that. Uh, they allow gig workers on their platform. Obviously, that Turo does not allow that, but Get Around does. They have the Drive with Uber program. And we kind of obviously knew that was going to happen as well, uh, given that Uber is in the rideshare space. Um, they have the option of renting hourly as well as daily. So that's more like get around. Uh, Turo does not. Um, they also have uh, better filtering options to find, uh, to search for vehicles. Um, and that I would say is more akin to Turo, not so much uh, get around. Um, they also, the, the host is allowed to adjust and charge a mileage rate um, which neither platform get around or Turo has. Um, and so, however, hire car does allow you to do that as well. Um, but, um, so that's interesting. Uh, so you will have control to over the mileage rate. Um, so that would certainly help with Uber drivers, um, and, and allow you to uh, customize that because I've always said on this channel, you don't want to let Uber drivers go more than four or 5,000 miles a month. And in this scenario, you could actually allow them to drive up to 5,000 uh, miles uh, free of charge. And then you could maybe charge them 30 to 50 cents a mile after that 5,000 uh, uh, mileage mark. So this will give you pretty solid uh, options and control over working with Uber drivers. That's good. Uh, let's, what else we got here? They show customer reviews um, and it has a timestamp with month and year. Um, that is, so in my opinion, that's more like Turo. So it sounds like the review system is probably gonna be a little tighter, a little tougher. Um, and so it'll be more similar to Turo in that regard. Like I've said before, Get Around's uh, review system is a little more forgiving. Now, are you going to need to wash cars in between every single trip like Turo? You might, I don't know yet, we'll find out. But if you are renting a car to an Uber driver, obviously they take care of the car and they will do all the cleaning and, and upkeep on the car. So that's good. Um, so, you know, they do, uh, so um, Uber uh, car share in Australia does have an option where you can do remote access to the car. So they do have an option where you can put uh, their vehicle telematic system on the car. Uh, they also do have an option where you can uh, do a lockbox style handoff like Turo. Uh, so basically, they're saying you can do this like Get Around or you can do this like Turo. So, you know, basically. Um, and so uh, they do uh, charge a monthly fee. It's $19 US, or excuse me, $19 uh, Australian dollars. Uh, so that's about a little over $12 US. I would assume that would be more here. Um, you know, so that's also very interesting. Uh, they do have a fleet option as well. So if you are one of their fleet owners, um, you can basically pay 119 a month in Australian dollars. So that's probably around 90, 95 US dollars. And that's an all-in fee to allow remote access to all your cars. Um, on So Turo RC doesn't have that. Everyone just puts their own aftermarket uh, vehicle telematics on the car with Turo cars. But with Get Around, Get Around charges you, I believe, about 19 or 20 bucks a month. Uh, something, or 18 to 20 a month per car for, that has a connect system on it. Uh, so this would be cheaper, uh, the, the Uber system would be cheaper 
if you have like five cars or more. Um, and to qualify for the fleet management program uh, on Uber CarShare Australia, I, it didn't say how many cars you need to have. Um, I think you can just opt into that program, uh, assuming you have three to five cars or more. So it does give you, you know, multiple options. Um, now the commission split, we've, we've kind of been talking about this and this is very interesting. So the commission split, uh, their default mode is very, is just like get around. So it's a 60, 40 split host keeps 60, 40%, uh, goes to, uh, Uber, uh, with no deductible. Um, but fleet owners can opt into a 75, 25 split with no deductible. Um, that is pretty cool. That extra 15% in commission when you have three to five cars or more is going to be a very nice bump. I wish get around would do something like that, but they haven't yet. Uh, obviously Turo has five different levels of insurance, which is, you know, great. Uh, cause it allows you to really customize, um, your insurance plan based on, um, you know, what, uh, is coming out, uh, in, in terms of how many cars you have. Uh, now that said, obviously the insurance system insurance costs in this country are different than Australia. So the deductibles, you know, all, commission split, all that stuff, it could be different when it gets here. Um, it's going to have to make economic sense for them, obviously. So, you know, these, this is just hypothetical, obviously, right now, but this is what is going on currently in Australia. Um, <clears throat> so they also have what's called an owner guarantee, and it covers you up to uh, damages up to 50,000 Australian dollars, which is 34,000 American dollars. Uh, so basically anything happen, you know, if there's a crash, whatever, uh, damage to the car, they will cover you up to $34,000 us dollars. Um, so it seems like it makes more sense in this scenario to put your cheaper cars on this platform. They are not going to cover you on the big stuff or on the more luxury level stuff like, uh, get around or Turo would. Uh, so that's interesting. So it sounds like Uber's just going to go after the more, uh, the cars that are under $35,000 or $34,000 in value. Um, another interesting thing in terms of vehicle requirements, they allow cars up to 20, uh, years old and no max mileage. So it's kind of a free for all. They're just saying, go for it, bring whatever car you want. Um, and so, like I said, uh, their tracker does track uh, the mileage in the system and it will, um, uh, you know, uh, let the host and the renter know how much mileage was uh, uh, done on the trip. Something I thought was that was very interesting, they did list how much you are expected to make as a host. Uh, they obviously put these numbers in Australian dollars. I uh, converted it to American dollars. And they said, you should expect $4,600, $4,600, an annual income for one car. Now that, in my opinion, is not that impressive. They're, so they're gonna have to bring that number up. Uh, so basically, you know, typically get around on their marketing materials promises $1,000 a month uh, in revenue after you, their take uh, to the hosts. Uh, in my experience, that's been pretty accurate. It's around a thousand. I would say it's even a little more than that sometimes. Sometimes around 1100, sometimes around 1200. Um, Turo, in my opinion, I'd say it's probably a little lower than that uh, on average. However, I would say on the luxury brand cars, Teslas, Audis, Jeep Wranglers, all that, BMWs, all that stuff's obviously higher. Um, I would say those sit more around the fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar uh, average a month. Um, now they said also, if you have 10 cars, you can expect to make in, this is in American dollars, $70,108 annual income from 10 cars. Now, in my opinion, that is not good for 10 cars. <laughs> um, so we'll have to see kind of how this shakes down. Um, um, I am planning to go up to Boston when this uh, goes live um, in Boston, and we're gonna get a real good deep dive on what's going on with this whole situation uh, for Uber car sharing, and I'll report back on that. So um, I, I'm very curious to kind of see their profit numbers. Uh, what they are promising to Australian hosts, in my opinion, is not that impressive. That's not going to fly in America. But I know Uber's not dumb. What I'm seeing here is that they seem 
to have run a pilot program down under where no one's paying attention to them and they're taking the best of Get Around and Turo and putting it together, <laughs> uh, as they should. So that's very interesting to me. Uh, so I, from what I am seeing here, they are, are, are putting together a very potent cocktail uh, with regards to a car sharing platform. This, this, from what I can tell, looks very impressive so far. Uh, like I said, they're gonna have to get those revenue numbers up and the host numbers, uh, host revenue numbers up, but I think they will. Uh, I, I think I, I trust that they are smart enough to uh, make the uh, case, uh, an economic uh, compelling case for hosts. So, um, you know, this is all very interesting to me. Um, a shout out to John Baldino who uh, brought this up to me. Uh, but I want to um, uh, get your guys' thoughts. Drop a comment below. We'd love to hear um, what you guys think about all this. And, um, um, you know, it certainly will be interesting. And once uh, Boston gets rolling, I'll get up there and I'm going to report back on what I'm seeing from the Boston landscape for Uber car sharing up there. Before I go, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you.